Excellent. Um, we are going to start with the call to order. So it is, according to my clock, 7.08 p.m. We are starting tonight's Virginia Avenue Park Advisory Board meeting via teleconference Blue Jean this evening, Monday, June 7th, 2021. And now I'm going to go through um, roll call. So let's see here. Barbie Applequist, present. Um, Christina? Present. Uh, Janine Jackson? Janine Jackson? Oh, that's okay. I think you're muted. Are you here? I'm just going through this list here. Um, let's see, Shirley Compton? Present. And um, Claudia Griff? Sorry, Gloria. Present. Yep. Okay. It's so weird working with the technology. Uh, and then we just noted that Mario is not here tonight, right? We don't see him. Am I missing anything? Okay. As, and everyone else has been called for. Okay. Do we have quorum? Good thing. Uh, now, if I could just ask the board members to review the agenda that Carla circulated earlier this evening and to see if there are any um, requests for amendments to the agenda or um, other sort of input or changes that anyone would like to make. No? Okay. I would like to add one item, um, and it's a, a special special exciting thing that I'm going to ask Carla to help me with tonight, but it's um, a special commendation for Liz Cruz, who is our outgoing chair who has served this board and our community for many, many years. So, Carla? Want me to do it before public comment? I Sorry. will. Oh, wait. Yeah, go ahead. Before public comment, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, everyone, it has been wonderful working with Liz on the board all these years. And um, so I have the pleasure of reading uh, the commendation that she will be receiving via mail uh, coming up in the next week or so. So, whereas Elizabeth Cruz has provided strong and passionate leadership for 11 years as a member of the Virginia Avenue Park Advisory Board and board chair for five years. And whereas Elizabeth Cruz has made a profound, lasting impact in the lives of hundreds of children and families who live in the Pico neighborhood through her advocacy and welcoming spirit. And whereas Elizabeth Cruz was a leader in initiating the family college tour, which introduced families for the first time to different colleges, campuses as far away as Cal State Channel Islands to nearby Loyola Marymount. And whereas Elizabeth Cruz has presented numerous parenting groups that have provided a space for families to share and learn ways to support their children. And whereas Elizabeth Cruz has been a mentor to VAP parent groups, including Familias Latinas Unidas for over 10 years, inspiring and guiding members to be civically engaged. Whereas Elizabeth Cruz has demonstrated her passion for education through supporting higher education, presenting college scholarships and believing in those students who would like to pursue a career in the trades by supporting the trades intern program. And whereas Elizabeth Cruz has gone above and beyond as a model of what it means to be a civically engaged resident and a leader in Santa Monica. Now, therefore, I, I am not Sue Himmelford, Sue Himmelford, Mayor of the City of Santa Monica on behalf of the members of City Council do, do hereby commend Elizabeth Cruz for her strong sense of social justice and commitment to our community by ensuring that obstacles be removed for families to participate in programs and services at Virginia Avenue Park and thereby improving the well-being of our community. So. Woohoo! Congratulations very much, Liz. <laughs> well deserved. Thank you. Wow. No words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liz. And, you know, really on behalf of the city, you've put in so many years. We appreciate it. We hope you won't be a stranger. And um, your voice has really shaped uh, the, what the city does. 
overall citywide as and very specifically at Virginia Avenue Park. Uh, and we, you know, I will miss those late nights that we used to spend <laughs> in the office at the park sometimes. But um, it really, it, uh, it was such a pleasure. And thank you on behalf of the city. Thank you. Wow. Um, speechless. <laughs> Don't know what to say, but thank you so much. Um, I have some words myself in public uh, comment. Uh, so we'll, we'll share then, but thank you so much for that commendation. It really, really um, means a lot. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I thank each and every one of you and thank you for, for that commendation. Thank you, Liz, for all of your work. And we're so sad that you um, aren't able to serve on the board in Santa Monica anymore, but we're, we hope to always have you and I hope you know that, you know, you're forever part of this community. Um, and, we, and with that, it's time for public comment. Oh, awesome. Public. Well, it's a and nice transition because yeah. I have a few things to say. <laughs> so, um, yes, if I can go ahead and uh, provide my, my comment. So, good evening, Virginia Avenue Park Advisory Board. As you may know, I have resigned from the Virginia Avenue Park Advisory Board as of April 30th as a board member and chair due to personal reasons. I have served as a board member since approximately 2010 and have committed myself to serving our Pico neighborhood community due to the importance, value, and impact our members have in how and what we do in providing services, programs, and events. Having grown up in the Pico neighborhood and Virginia Avenue Park, I know firsthand the value of the park, of what the park means to our youth and families and our residents. I would like to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to each of you this evening. Senora Gloria, Mario, Dr. Shirley Compton, Christina, Barbie, our former VAP staff, Jaime Cruz, Louis Alexander, Amy Larkin, Cindy Cruz, Rebecca Botello, who are truly missed, and to our current VAP staff, Mr. Michael Jackson, Eric, Arthur, Erica Dolores, David, Lupe, to our beloved Stacy, who is now working for SMPD, to Sylvia Cisneros, who's now at the main library, to Carla Fantosi for her long extended hours as she continues to give, and above all to our parent groups, Familia Latinas Unidas and Parent Connection Group. Our beloved park has evolved over the years to be the hub and heart of our community. And I'm so proud and blessed and thankful to have been part of the many projects, meetings and workshops and cultural events we have hosted, sponsored and participated in. The collaborative process and tenacity that has been given throughout has been the game changer in preserving culture, well-being and community. Our work here is key now more than ever, and I know our board will continue the work onward and forward. With immense gratitude, I say thank you. I will not say goodbye. Instead, we'll say I will see you all later. I know I will find my way to be involved in some capacity. And I conclude with this quote. The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Coretta Scott King. Thank you. Thank you, Liz, for those words. We're missing you. I'm so bummed that this isn't in person because I just want to give you a big hug. But um, it's so good. it is good to see your face. Uh, do we have any other public comments from from anyone attending? Okay. I, I, All right. I with would... that, we will move on to our reports. Yeah. Our first report is with. Oh, sorry. yes, please, Gloria. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I, I want to say. Uh, thank you to Liz for all that she has done for our community, for uh, uh, for the park, for the children, especially for the youth. And I want to say thank you very much for all that you have done for me to to learn how to to be with with all of you, which was very scary for me, and and I, I appreciate that. Uh, that you let me find some confidence in myself. So thank you very much for that. May God bless you and you be happy and, and continue a very successful life. Thank you, Liz, and thank you to everybody. Gracias, Señora Gloria. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Are there any other public comments? All right. 
Right. We'll go ahead and proceed with um, Danny Melendez from the Santa Monica Police Department. I think there was one more public comment in Spanish. Oh. I believe Claudia wanted oh. to say something. Sorry, thank okay. you. Yeah, please do. Sorry, I couldn't see from my screen. Okay, hold on. Can you hear? 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 Por ayudarnos, dar a nuestros hijos. Eh, gracias por todo, te apreciamos de todo corazón. Y pues, siempre que hay un cambio, pero creo que siempre viene algo mejor y te deseamos, te deseo todo lo mejor. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, Claudia. Sorry, translate, or you, you're okay. Um, may I, Carla, is that okay? Not necessary. Oh, okay, so she just wants to uh, thank Liz on behalf of Familias Latinas Unidas uh, as a great advocate specifically for the youth and with great change comes great opportunity. So she wishes you the very, very best. Thank you, Claudia, and thank you, Josefina, for that. Thank you, Carmen. Carmen, would you like to say something? Latinas Unidas, uh, we want to thank you to Liz for everything that you have done for the families, for our children, and for all the guidance that you gave us with you, um, with your power that you have, <laughs> that uh, that energy that you have that can help us grow. So thank you very much, Liz. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you so much. So nice, so nice. Can you hear me? Okay, yes. Liz, I wanted to thank you as the new chair of PCG. I wanted to thank you as a longtime member of PCG from far above of watching and seeing how you shared so much with us. Um, even the, the time that we went pre-pandemic, we hopped in your car and we went to Orange County and we shared so much. And I didn't even speak the language of Spanish, but I knew, you know, based on the children at that time that was encamped, um, to just be present, to just be available and just be adaptable. And you made that so easy for us. Even my daughter, she was so surprised. It's like, mom, I don't speak Spanish. I said, it doesn't worry. Don't worry about it. Liz got our back right now. <laughs> so we're going to be fine. But you've always been there and you've shared with PCG. We've seen you floating. Uh, honestly, I've never seen you sit down in a chair before until right now. <laughs> So I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done for us. Thank you, Adrena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so true. I, I'm learning to sit down and <laughs> stay still. <laughs> so thank you so much for those words. Appreciate it. Danny, would you like to say something? Yeah, this is a new role for me with Santa Monica PD. Uh, and I would have to say that um, as soon as I got this position, I reached out to Liz because I know how um, how important she is to the Pico neighborhood. Um, I've known Liz for several years. Um, and everything that everyone has said is so true. Um, and I just want to say thank you on behalf of myself uh, and um, everyone in the department, because everyone knows who you are, Liz, and how important and crucial you are to the Pico neighborhood community. You're a pillar in the community, and I'm just so grateful to um, have the opportunity to cross paths with you once again. Um, and I, I know we're going to be seeing uh, more of each other, because, like you said, I know you're not gone, but 
you know, you'll, you'll take your break. It's well deserved. Uh, but we will see you around. Um, and uh, thank you everyone for allowing uh, myself and the Santa Monica Police Department to be a part of this community. Gracias, Danny. Appreciate it. Thank you. May I say something too? Yeah, please. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here, Liz. I've been missing so much, and I'm just learning that you're stepping down from the advisory board, so this is all news to me. But as I'm hearing everyone, I don't want to have you leave with the board without me thanking you first for everything that you did, all the help that I got when I came into um, to Pico to the Pico Library, um, when I was, when I learned about, started learning about Pico and its community, your name popped up since the beginning. And it was very important for me that the programs or services that we were bringing into the, into the library were gonna be to your lights. And that you were going to accept them because I knew that you were a leader for the community. And, um, so thank you for being welcoming to me and for always being supportive of the programs that we had at the library and, and uh, the services. And I, I don't know where you're going. I have to hopefully <laughs> be with you and see. But I know wherever you're gonna go, Liz, you're gonna be uh, successful. You are already a successful person and, and you're a great leader for the community. Um, I echo what Gloria said, you've been amazing to all the parents in the community. And I was able to see that in the various times that you gathered with groups of parents in one of our community rooms and, um, the way that the parents expressed about you was just amazing. So thank you for everything that you did for, for the community. And I know you're going to continue doing that. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for such a beautiful, kind words. I'm really, I'm really just taken back, but really, as I shared, it's, it's a community effort. And a lot of this work, it's because of the presence and connection that each of you have to the park and to our families. I, I, I could not have done this with all of you guys um, involved in some way, shape or form. So I'm appreciative of the relationships I have fostered and developed over the years and I definitely see myself connected in some way. Um, uh, so right now, just trying to figure those pieces out, but, um, but I'm just really thankful and blessed to have been part of this journey and will continue um, and we'll see what the future holds. So thank you for this time and for this uh, opportunity here from everyone and for the commendation, Carla, thank you. Thank you, Liz. Um, is, are, are there any other public comments or either about the commendation or other things generally for the park tonight um, that aren't otherwise agendized? Eric, can I add something, Barbie, really quick? Yeah, please um, do. Um, I've had one of the one of the few that opp opportunity. I won't I won't date us, Liz, um, as far as how far back I've known you. So I mean, Liz was one of the first people I've met here when I started with the city, and um, we got to work with her professionally for quite a number of years. And then when she went to school and got all her stuff, you know, I've been very impressed with everything that she's done professionally. So I've learned a lot from her over the years, and um, you know, just super impressed with everything she's done for the community and the time I've got to spend with her professionally. And so um, I know she's leaving, but she's not gone, if that makes sense. I know she'll be able to be reached on amongst the community and she'll be there for everybody. And best of luck on all your stuff, Liz. And yeah, you've aged better than I have over the years, I'll give it that. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. And I'm glad you didn't divulge that information. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I think with that, we're going to move on to the uh, Santa Monica Police Department V3 crime report. Uh, Officer Melendez? All right, um, you can call me Danny. Um, so uh, Santa Monica Police Department, we put together the crime report. It goes back uh, about a month from today's date. Uh, overall, we extended our perimeter um, two blocks north 
of uh, Virginia Avenue Park, two blocks east, west, and south. Um, so in the last month, we've had a grand total of uh, 20 crimes, uh, part one crimes. We had uh, three aggravated assaults, um, one commercial, two commercial burglaries, or one which was um, at Virginia Park uh, residential burglary, uh, vehicle burglary, and that uh, includes, you know, uh, catalytic converters. Um, we had one disorderly conduct, uh, larceny, um, a larceny of vehicles and from a building, a simple assault, and uh, five vandalism. Uh, the three that stood out to us um, was the vandalism. Uh, it was graffiti, uh, which was painted, spray painted on uh, at the park, at one of the park picnic uh, benches. 311 was uh, requested for graffiti removal, um, so that was taken care of. As you all know, we did see an increase in graffiti in the last couple of months, but um, there was a person of interest, uh, or one of our units uh, was working closely um, <clears throat> with that um, person of interest, and we've seen a decline in um, in graffiti um, as it relates to, um, uh, you know, um, basically the gang affiliation. Uh, luckily, we could say that we haven't seen anything new within the last two weeks, which is great. Um, as far as the aggravated assault that occurred at the park, um, that was transpired between two individuals, um, uh, but it was just a, a fight, uh, nothing major to be noted as far as, uh, you know, directed at somebody that was, you know, or sorry, I should say no one that's, uh, you know, a patron of the park should be worried about that. Um, that was an isolated incident. The commercial burglary, uh, Eric and I talked about it. Uh, guess uh, somebody removed a window or a glass window from uh, the annex. It was carefully done, so which kind of leads us to believe uh, two things. Um, one, it, it was, since it was so carefully done, maybe someone was looking to see if they could uh, find shelter uh, in there. Um, and, or two, uh, Eric told me that there was some vending machines there. Obviously, the building hasn't been uh, Uh, approximately about a month ago, there was um, that was just uh, you know an ongoing relationship which has now been um, taken care of. Uh, so nothing major to report at this time, as far as that goes. Uh, so I can translate in Spanish a little bit, and I'll take questions. Um, so in uh, in in uh, la vecindad del Pico neighborhood, uh, uh, al parque le, le damos un uh, reporte de crimen uh, cada mes. Uh, este es de, de un mes. Uh, y uh, extendimos las, uh, las distancias del parque uh, dos bloques hacia el norte en, en, en todas las direcciones. Uh, tres cosas que sucedieron en el parque que son las de uh, mayor... Um, Lo, o, bueno, los que llama la atención fue el vandalismo que ocurrió en una uh, banca del parque donde um, se deletrearon pues, uh, signos de pandilla. Uh, desde ya se ha limpiado. Uh, como dije anteriormente, habíamos visto um, uh, que el, uh, el vandalismo había, uh, se había pues, notado bastante, pero desde hace dos semanas eso uh, se ha... Uh, disminuido y eso es porque las unidades de, uh, del departamento de policía tenían una persona de interés. Uh, no hubo ningún arresto, pero sí uh, hubo conversación y uh, lo bueno es que uh, eso se ha, ha parado uh, por lo pronto. Uh, hubo una pelea en el parque, esas dos personas uh, era un incidente aislado, uh, nada, nada de preocuparse y um, un a, a, un intento de robo en el parque donde uh, quitaron un, una ventana de uno de los edificios. Uh, Eric y yo habíamos hablado de eso. Me había comentado que había um, unas máquinas donde pueden, uh, se puede haber dinero porque se venden uh, alimentos, uh, pero no había dinero uh, en este momento, por obvio, por, porque el edificio estaba cerrado. Nadie ha estado uh, navegando por el, uh, el edificio. Uh, el otro punto que podemos ver es que lo hicieron tan cuidadosamente que podría ser alguien que está uh, buscando dónde dormir y uh, precisamente 
por eso um, hemos comentado en eso. Pero aparte de eso, no hay algo uh, muy grave que reportar. Thank you, Janine. Sure. Go ahead, Janine. Um, I don't know if I missed it because the internet was a little shaky, but did you discuss the the incident that happened about a month ago when uh, there was helicopter called out for an assault? I think it was on Cloverfield in 20th. So I briefly addressed that. Um, I can go into um, more specifics. Uh, that was a domestic violence case. So that's why there was a, a, a chopper involved. There was a perimeter that was set. Um, there was no use of force. Uh, the person who was a known uh, in suspect or subject, I should say, in the, uh, in the um, would, we'll call it, um, I guess, because the case has been resolved in the um, alleged domestic violence um, case. Um, all the charges were dropped. Um, it is um, two individuals who are known to each other who are involved in a relationship. And based on the initial uh, comments of the call, there was that heightened alert. Um, luckily, uh, after detectives conducted their own investigation, um, the matter was resolved. Uh, it was resolved peacefully. No one, there was no use of force, like I said, no injuries to either individual. Um, and so that's just the way that the call came through to our dispatching center. Uh, it was uh, quite alarming. And so um, that's why there were several um, people who were called out uh, and tactics were used not to, you know, what we normally do. But um, like I said, just uh, based on the comments, uh, that's why there was a heightened alert. I, I do have a follow up question, and that one is um, because, uh, you know, the situation that happened with the helicopters and the warnings that were given to residents in the park, um, I noticed, um, you know, phone calls, texts, and even online residents in the area were trying to figure out what was going on, um, how to protect themselves, what was the situation, how, what is your recommendation um, for residents to find that type of information? Um, because it was quite, it was quite alarming. So um, based on the time of the occurrence at that time, there was no, um, our, our social media uh, specialist was not available because it was in the evening on a weekend, there was no one working, but uh, that basically falls on uh, our, our dispatching center. They have the capacity to either send out a Santa Monica alert uh, as we do uh, during uh, the working hours and when a major incident is occurring. Um, but why it was not done, I can't answer that question for you because they have their own. They're, they're not directly, uh, they're not employees of the police department. And so there's, you know, they're, they're OEM, so Office of Emergency Management. So they have their own protocols. Um, so it, they take over at a later part in the day. So they, will be the ones that were would be responsible um, to notify. But like I, I like I would say um, to any and all residents is if you see the helicopter up there and you see a variety of police um, vehicles in and around the area, just kind of sit tight and then you can call in uh, later in the non-emergency number and, or reach out to me. And if it's in our neighborhood, I can provide you with uh, the information that I can, uh, you know, that I have, uh, but as 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 of now, there was I, I understand because uh, many people have raised that concern, um, but I can't answer their their question as to why they didn't release uh, an alert or send out an alert. Thank you, Janine. Um, and I think. Barbie, I think somebody put a comment. Yeah, I was just going to read it out. Um, uh, they did say that one patron called the park um, to have all of their holds transferred to the Montana branch um, due to that particular incident. She said she no longer felt safe coming to the Pico branch, and they found out about this secondhand. Um, so, so it sounds to me like that 
perhaps if there's a better way to communicate electronically to the residents, that might be the fastest way to kind of um, calm concerns of the more aggressive or worrisome type of activity in the neighborhood. I was just thinking about the trauma that um, our community, our city faced last year um, after the protests, during the protests regarding the murder of, of George Floyd. And I feel like our neighborhood, our community wants to come together and, and take care of one another. So whatever we can do to support that as a park and to share the message that the community is safe um, along lines of what Janine was saying. You know, however we can partner with you on that, okay, let us know. Yeah, I definitely would keep you guys informed um, as far as, the, you know, obviously it's a sensitive uh, information that we can't release just based on the ongoing, um, you know, investigation. Um, but I, I, I did, the people who reached out to, um, to us, uh, you know, because I, I received the call that same night um, and so then as I walked in the following morning, I was kind of briefed on uh, the incident. Um, and my first question, because I, I, I do have family that lives in the Pico neighborhood and they reached out to me. And so um, I was I, I could only give out what, you know, what was there um, and what was presented at the time. Uh, I did speak to um, our management and, and did, you know, raise the question as to why. Um, an alert system wasn't, or alert message wasn't sent out, um, and they basically gave me the answer that you know I just gave you. Uh, and so there's still some internal conversations that need to be had um, with our dispatch center and um, and our command staff. So, um, but like I said, it, whatever information I have, you feel free to send me an email, and um, I can provide that information. Thank you, Danny. Um, are there any other comments or questions from the board? We'll move on to our next report. Okay, the next report will be uh, with respect to the Pico Branch Library. And um, we have Sylvia is here and also I have Robert Graves. Go ahead. Mm, yeah. Oh, please. Sylvia, turn your mic on. <laughs> Sylvia, your mic is off. Sorry. There Do you, you want to inform them about the um, the new hours, or you want me to go ahead and? Sure, I'll, I'll do new hours, and then um, uh, Sylvia has some information, and also she can tell us about summer reading, uh, since she's kind of very much in the uh, um, planning um, mode for that. Um, so uh, our hours have changed um, at the library um, as of June first sort of changed. Um, uh, we uh, were now closed on Mondays at the Pico Branch. Um, the main library is open um, that day and they are open to the public um, for limited um, services where you can actually go in for um, a half hour um, to use computers, um, browse the shelves, check out books, um, uh, do normal things that you would do at the library. Um, we're hoping to get to that phase for Pico and the um, Montana branch by the fall, but it's all kind of dependent upon what we hear from the city um, with the uh, budget requests we've given them um, for staffing. Um, so that's hopefully coming up in the fall. Um, but in the meantime, we're we're closed on Monday, but we're um, but we actually do have staff in the library. So if anybody um, does need to reach us, um, we are inside. Um, and uh, if you're part of the par park staff, you can get a hold of us fairly easily. Um, and um, then we're open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, um, the regular hours that we were, we've were we been doing since last summer, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for curbside pickup. Um, and then our evening, which had been Wednesdays in um, from March to May, has moved to Thursdays. Um, and the reason for that was um, we had heard a lot of people um, were wanting um, to uh, go to the library after the, um, the the farmers market at the main library. Um, so, um, so if um, 
yeah, so so it, w- it was all tied to the farmer's market um, in downtown um, that, that we've now shifted our evening hours to when uh, to Thursdays, I'm sorry, Thursdays. Um, and that is 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. So it's the same six hour window. It's just shifted a little bit more. Um, and then uh, we're open the first Saturdays of the month, except for July, which because the first Saturday of the month is the 4th of July weekend, we decided to, um, I think we're pushing it to the to the second Saturday, the 10th um, instead. So, yeah, so uh, we may do that again in September because the same issue hits us with Labor Day, um, but um, all of these shifts and hours are getting confusing. So we're trying to figure out what, where we're gonna stake things out. At the moment, we don't know 100% for sure, but definitely I think July is, um, it'll be the second Saturday. So so those are our hours changes. Um, same services, we're doing uh, curbside uh, where you can place holds and uh, then just call us when you arrive and uh, we will check your items out to you. Um, the main library, like I said, is open for, for limited services, so definitely visit the main library um, if, you, if you'd like to uh, go in and browse the shelves or take the kids in uh, to, uh, the children's computers are open too, so it's great so the kids can actually get back to some of those learning services and hopefully we'll get them soon too. So stay tuned. Um, and then uh, summer reading is starting in a couple weeks. Um, I think it's the 21st of June. Um, and I will let, I'll hand off to Sylvia. She can tell you more about summer reading. Yeah, and um, before I do that, I just want to also share that um, starting mid-July, we will be opening the Ocean Branch with self-serve um, service. It's going to be, there will be no staff there, but uh, the public will be, um, if interested, they can register to become like VIP members for the Ocean Park um branch and they will be able to um op- the doors will open for them um only for those that register and people will be able to go in browse the collection check out their materials and then leave so it's a self-serve um library moving forward and um main library also from five days went to four days due to the opening uh, to the public. And as far as summer reading program, it will begin on June 21st. It will be an eight week program ending in August 15. We will begin with, with a kickoff um, children's music concert on the 21st at 3.30 p.m. Uh, that will be a virtual children concert. And uh, with Every student that registers to the summer reading this year will get a free book at the registration. Um, other programs that we're working uh, on is the SORA. We have finalized merging um, a program. It's called SORA with a unified school district, which allows all the students in the district to have access um, to our ebook collection using their school ID. So if there's a student out there that doesn't have a, a public library card, they are now able to log into our system and check out their our electronic uh, books, ebooks, just by using their school ID. So I will. Uh, we're working on promotion for that, so we, I will be sending that as soon as I have it ready to um, to the book groups and, of course, uh, forward it to Carla. We will be working um, with the summer lunch program at um, at the park, Virginia Park, as long uh, also with Crest and Pal. We just received the funds today. So we will be able to accommodate to to work with all three programs this year. And uh, we will be supporting the program by providing free books to the, to the children, um, doing some, I, we still need to discuss if it's gonna be virtual visits or on-site visits to read to the children and, and do an activity with them together. Uh, it will be a total of three visits during the, their summer lunch program. And 
let me see. I think as far as programs, uh, Robert, do you want to tell them a little bit about your teen program for summer? Sure. I actually have two teen programs. The first one is on um, Saturday, June 26th, and we have a flyer um, at the curbside for um, anybody who wants to find out more. You can either take a picture of it. We have one hanging up, or you can take the paper version. Um, and that is a writing workshop by two um, local YA writers, um, which is um, how to write um, a novel over the summer for teens. So it's basically explaining to teens the process that they need to go through to kind of set themselves up to uh, to uh, write a novel over the summer. So how to outline, how to um, do your research, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, and that is going to be on Zoom. Um, it's a uh, uh, it's limited to 50 kids, but we actually don't have a way of limiting the number on Zoom. So, yeah, it's a, it's a hard, <laughs> or it's not really a hard limit. We'll see how, how it goes. And if we get more than 50, we get great, you know, that's. <laughs> um, and then the second program in July, which is July, Saturday, July 17th. Um, that one is at 2 p.m. Um, that's an author talk with an author named Michael G. Long who wrote a book called Kids on the March. Um, and it's about 15 stories um, in the last 100 years of teens who've, who've been involved in social movements um, from Black Lives Matter to the Parkland kids um, to, um, to working, workers' rights. There's one um, where um, some kids in the 1950s were, uh, were involved with the workers' rights movement. And it's basically tied to um, Sam O'Hai's theme this summer. They're not going to be doing a Sam O'Hai Reads book for the kids. Um, instead, they're going to ask them to uh, consider a question, which is, how does conflict lead to change? So um, we're just kind of trying to focus on kids as change agents so that, that they can affect change themselves. Um, and so that'll be an, uh, a talk with that author. Um, also, I saw Liz ask in the chat um, about adults for summer reading. Um, we are going to have an adult summer reading as well. Um, and uh, that one, it's um, la uh, last year and previous years, it was uh, the adults got a book at the end. Um, we don't have enough books this summer, so we're going to um, have the adults read um, for a certain number of hours, and then they'll be entered into a drawing for prizes. Um, and we're also doing Santa Monica Reads this summer. Um, it's the 19th year. Um, and the book we're reading is called The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. Um, she is the author, if you know the book Room, which is about the little boy and the mother who are held prisoner in a, you know, by a creepy guy in, in, in a cellar in the, ba the back of his backyard. Um, that's the novel she's most famous for, but The Pull of the Stars came out last year. Um, it's about um, the Spanish flu, um, the, the 1918 epidemic, um, and it's about three women in a uh, running a maternity ward um, in the midst of the uh, that epidemic. Um, and it's it is a little bit harrowing and brut uh, brutal. It takes place over just a couple days, um, so it reads like a thriller, um, and um, and it's 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 ultimately uplifting um, as it, it, as much as it is bleak. Um, but it also kind of has a a great story um, that kind of makes you feel good at the end. Um, and um, it's about women um, um, who have, were very much overlooked in in that pandemic and maybe today's as well. And um, and uh, it also gives us a chance to uh, celebrate frontline workers, um, people who are on the front lines and help help us get through these things. So um, so anyway, so that's summer reading and Santa Monica reads. <laughs> and um, just one last thing that I wanted to be here today uh, to inform everyone that um, I have been uh, I have accepted a new position within the library. Uh, as you know, I have been doing the interim position for uh, Youth and Family Services Coordinator at the main library. And um, that position has been offered to me, and I have accepted the position. That means that um, my home will now be at the main library. I will no longer be uh, managing Pico Branch, 
but uh, one of the reasons the reasons that uh, that I accepted this position was because, of course, you all know that the library was severely cut in staff, and due to that, our our library is rebuilding very different. Our library is going to be very um, very different um, mo moving forward, and so with that. It, my position was going to change in a way where uh, I was going to be, I was not going to be able to be close to the community as I was before, uh, bringing programs and services. Whereas if I stay in the position that I'm entering for, that I was entering for, um, it allows for me to continue working with all of you bringing programs to the community and not only to that community i'm going to be in charge of the uh, system-wide programming for the youth and teens and um, so that was um, one of the main reasons i accepted the position to to be able to still come to um, the communities and provide the services that we have been previously offering and um, now it's just I'm not going to be residing there. I'm going to be at the main library. But when I do any programs, I will be approaching all of you and coming to do the programs on site uh, personally, along with other librarians that will accompany um, me to make sure that the program goes well. So um, I wanted to be here to let you know um, about that change. and to thank everyone for all the support that you've given me throughout the six years that I've been managing Pico Branch. Um, I, I am very proud of what we did for the branch. It was um, a very vibrant library and um, the, the partnership that we had with Virginia Avenue Park, it was amazing and I think it will continue to <laughs> to to be a, a amazing um, I'm not leaving anywhere I'm still gonna be able to work with Martha in the different festivals and you all have my contact it's the same you can always um, just reach out to me if you have any program ideas for our youth and we can work together on that I will no longer be able to provide programming for adults. Um, there's going to be a, a, a new coordinator for that. Someone else will be working on adult programming. So I'm sad about that part. Because, um, but uh, for now, I think that was the best option for me to, to help um, our library and our community. I'd like to add that it's the best option for all of us. Uh, uh, Sylvia forgot to wear her cape today, but uh, she's a superhero and we're lucky we got her for you services. So, oh, thanks Sylvia. Thank I you. Know. So, yeah, so for PICO, uh, what will happen, there will be, um, I think July, they will begin looking for um, a new um, librarian three or manager that will be managing that site so um, you will find out more about that we will miss you but you've been such an amazing asset to this community for years and really advocating for the all of all ages in that way that santa monica believes that you know thriving from from cradle to career and it's just it's so strange to be doing this during covid times where we can't see each other in person um, but sorry, yeah. Robert, you were finishing something. No, I was back. just going to say, um, like she was saying that, um, you know, uh, she's really not going away. She now is just everywhere. So um, it's kind of the the centralized way we're kind of going with the library. Um, the adult services person will be every location, and uh, the branch person that will take over Pico, whether that's me or somebody else. Um, we'll handle all of the branches so it'll be we're, we're just we're, we're technically all going to have to find where we put our capes because we're going to have to <laughs> cover a lot of bases 
I know that for our community in particular, having that face-to-face -face contact and that ability to to really work with and trust the um, the librarian who they you know can see and talk to every day will be really important moving forward. Um, and I know that a lot of the community, all ages, have have trusted Sylvia over the years. I, I think about some of the programs you've brought in particular to. Um, our, our non-English speaking community members who had n never um, written or read before and really um, doing everything that you could to get funding and support uh, for for those community members and how much that changed their lives. And I, I'm excited. I guess the rest of the city gets to benefit from that as well in a different way. And whoever will take your place in those spaces um, has very big shoes to fill. But we, we will miss seeing you daily, Sylvia, but we're excited for your new role. Congratulations. Thank you, Maureen. I'm going to, for the, um, is it, it's getting close to 8 o'clock, uh, move on to the next report. Unless, Robert, did you have any other things to add? Okay. Um, so, Carla, would you like to speak about the program, the parks programs and operations? Yes, so uh, I'm going to do a very quick update, and then I will turn it over to Eric. Uh, I did want to tell you that since we last met, we had a wonderful arts and literacy festival. We also had a, a wonderful Cesar Chavez event, which I'm sure Claudia and Carmen will talk about. Um, we also have been doing things for uh, our pantry and our parent groups for Mother's Day. We'll be doing something for Father's Day, too. And the big program that we're planning uh, next is Juneteenth, which is going to be on Saturday, June 19th. You should have already received the invitation and a uh, flyer. Please share it with, with your friends. Just so you know, Juneteenth, there are a number of things happening this year. We are still going to be virtual. Uh, we have recorded all the performers at the park. And they will, we will broadcast the program uh, on Saturday, June 19th, at starting at 10:30. Um, but also, there's something happening at Belmar uh, Park in the evening, which is an in-person event, and that is a, a tiny film series, I think. And Janine will be able to speak to that later, I'm sure. And then we also at Calvary Baptist Church, there is something, uh, an event happening, and they are honoring. Uh, Laverne Ross, who is the founder of Juneteenth in Santa Monica, so and a longtime member of Calvary. Um, and that is from 11, I think, until 4 in person at the church on 20th and Olympic, or is that Colorado? Colorado. Um, so those are the things. Then the other thing I wanted to let everyone know that we did raise over $5,000 for scholarships for our graduating seniors. We received seven applications from students. So I'll be reaching out to the board chair and to identify um, two of our, two to three of our board members who would like to conduct the interviews. And Sylvia, I, I, you've done it in the past, so it would be lovely if you'd be available. To also be on the interview panel again. Um, and we're looking at doing the Next Steps event. At this point, we're still planning for it to be virtual. Uh, in late, uh, mid to late July, where Eric and I were talking today, thinking about maybe Bastille Day on July 14th or July 21st um, in the evening. So, uh, we can, you know, if anybody has particular thoughts about that, please do not hesitate to send me a quick note about it and when you think it would be good. But I was very happy that we did get seven applications. Several are from, uh, we have one from PCG, we have uh, several from the Metro Group, and even one of our volunteers from the pantry who's been volunteering with us for the whole duration of the pantry he did submit his application today. So. Um, also, we have free summer lunch that will be starting on June 21st and it will be running to August 11th or I think to the 13th. And that will be available. Poor Eric can give you more of an update, but we still don't know 
Exactly, because our application has not yet been approved by the state. And I think everybody is just behind because of the way they're, you know, we're waiting for things to reopen. Do reopening protocols. And then in terms of reopening, uh, the, the city's budget will be approved at the end of, uh, of June. And at that time, they will be, uh, one of the proposed changes is to increase the room rental rates uh, by 17%, which for residents does not amount to much. So if you think uh, the, the rent, room rental at the patio is $26 an hour, so it will bring it up to 31. And then at the pat and the Thelmateri room, that was $52 an hour. So now it's probably going to be about $60 or $61 an hour. Still a pretty good deal for anybody who's doing a, a party or an event. We don't know. Oh, I think the plan is for rooms to be available for rent sometime in early July, but we will only have one room available at that time, the patio room, because the cemetery is still being used as the pantry. Um, we expect that the pantry will transition to another location at the end of the summer. Okay, so, uh, and then we'll be able, we'll have to do, once we move the, the pantry out, it'll take us about a month to make repairs to the room, and that, so that it's, looks nice and spiffy for people who are renting it. Okay, so that's what I have on reopening. Still don't have um, a plan on when the splash pad is going to reopen. Uh, I think it's it's fully functioning. It's ready to be turned on, but we're waiting for the county protocols to be updated. That currently, they're, it's prohibitive for us to open the, that until we have the new protocols. And all the new protocols are going to be announced on Tuesday, June 15th. So you'll see us scrambling a bunch after that day. I'm going to turn it over to Eric. Thank you very much, Carla. Thank you, Carla. Um, okay. Hello, can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. All right. Well, Carla, I think, sent um, our program report to all of the board members earlier in the afternoon, so I won't kind of read it verbatim. But um, it's been a challenging year for all of our youth and a lot of our community due to COVID and all the protocols that we've had to follow and the limitations we've had at the park. Um, long story short, um, throughout the year, we've been limited with how many kids we can take. We've had three pods of 12 that we were allowed to take on due to space and also um, staffing and budgets that we had. Um, throughout the year, we were able to increase up to 14 per pod. So we were able to get up to 42 kids enrolled, which was basically ages six to 14 that we were able to take on. Um, so each pod had its own different thing. We had temperature checks, we had um, COVID surveys that we had to do throughout the year. So it was a lot for our kids, it was a lot for, um, there was quite a, quite a number of kids that were not able to be a part of our program in person. However, we were able to offer virtual options like we had talked about for our artists and residents and also virtual homework assistants that we had roughly over 50 kids that had signed up for classes um, for our artists and resident stuff. And so it was, we gave a lot of our community options who were not able to come in person and also maybe just weren't comfortable. So throughout the year, our staff have done a great job. Um, providing virtual assistance and also in-person programming to um, throughout the year. And also, a lot of us have put on plenty of uh, different hats, also assisting with some of the events that happened over the past six months from, from Our Girls Rock to the Greens Festival to Cesar Chavez to a lot of the different things. So our staff behind the scenes helped out and uh, made some of these kits for all the participants to be able to do and also a lot of work on the pantry. So. Um, Kudos to our staff, I think, for being able to put on um, a variety of hats and help out the community in a variety of ways. And thank you to Carla for all her leadership and support to be able to give us those opportunities to be able to provide all those things and our staff and our, for the community and also the programming for the kids. Um, I want to touch on a couple highlights. Um, we were able to have a spring camp. We were able to get a lot of kids for that anywhere. I think we roughly had like 30 to 35 kids out there. Um, we're able to take some off-site excursions too, which were exciting for the kids. We had to 
Um, we had a beach day where the kids were loving it. That's the first time they've kind of really been off-site um, while in programming. And we also got to view um, historic Belmar Park, uh, which was a, a wonderful opportunity to be able to see um, the background and history of um, how the the field came about and all the, the, the history of actually the Belmar Triangle there, which a lot of kids didn't know, but to see the art pieces around. So the kids got to play on the field and walk around and see the art piece, um, the artwork, that was beautiful. Out in Belmar, so we're, they're able to get offsite, which was great for, their, for our youth. Um, so we're winding down. Our last day of um, school year programming is June 11th, this Friday. Um, we start summer programming June 21st. And um, we expect to have roughly, we're estimating anywhere from 50 to 60 elementary youth and about 15 to 20 teens. So we're looking for, a, we're expecting a full house for our in-person programming. We will not have any virtual programming. We're anticipating everything will be open after June 15th. Um, our, our program hours are 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, we do plan on going off-site for some several trips, you know, um, um, some, some full-day trips or some half-day trips that we plan on utilizing our resources here in Santa Monica, some hiking, and also plan on doing on some trips like Knott's Berry Farm and everything else to give our youth an opportunity to get a, to be a part of all those things, which, which they're used to having during summer. Summer is supposed to be fun, and we're trying to provide that, and also get them with some academic stuff. Um, for, for opportunities throughout as far as um, educational games, some other opportunities from tutoring, um, and give them those opportunities they need to get gear up towards fall, which we anticipate being a full reopen um, for just about every school in Santa Monica. We're excited for our summer. We're still taking, we still have a few, sp a few spots left. So please share with the, any of the kids in the community. Um, we will, we're gonna take them. So we wanna make sure we can get as many as we can and we don't wanna turn anybody away. So we plan on having a full house and, probably over enroll a little bit. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, which will lead me into our, some of our events coming up in the summer, which we're pretty excited about. Um, we do plan on collaborating with um, um, Officer Melendez and the police department and trying to do some meetups and also some high school events and some gatherings and possibly um, a night out where we're kinda, where we can have the entire park community come out, have like a movie night, do a game night, invite all the youth, and we're that'll be geared up towards everything. We're looking for that date roughly, I want to say, first week of August, which we will share with all of you, where it's just going to be a free night out in the evening to be able to get out and just basically meet the new staff. Like I said, there's a lot of new staff here at VAP. Like um, I think Liz mentioned a little bit, there's a little bit of a changeover. And we're looking to hear, and, and so our community gets to meet us and provide some opportunity to meet the our neighborhood resource officers like Officer Melendez and Officer Medina. And just like I said, bring some openness to our community. So we're looking at trying to do that and we'll reach out to the parent groups to um, see if they're interested as well as assisting with that and helping out with that. So we're looking for some big, some big things coming up as we gear up towards a full reopen and hopefully our community will embrace that. Um, we do plan on having a few high school events. We do plan on partnering with other resources in Santa Monica. So our first one that we plan to do a high school game night as we're looking is July 1st. Um, it'll be about 5, 5.30 till about 7 to 8 o'clock. We will have uh, some of SMPD there. We'll have our staff. We'll reach out to school people and also uh, the parent groups in regards to that. We're looking to kind of reopen and re-envision our teen center. Um, we're going to have to, with all the cuts and everything that you, I think a lot of you are familiar with, we've had to re-envision how we can um, get things open with the limited resources we have. So we're going to do a few little events during the summer to welcome our high school kids back and kind of get our get our teen center back open and running and and fun and safe and um, and give them every opportunity to be successful from SAT prep to college stuff. I know this was kind of tough for them to do that, but we're hoping to start that right away in the summer so we can get them ready to go for next year. So we have a, a lot of a lot of things on our plate that. Carlos kind of tasked me with, but I'm, I'm up for the challenge. You know, there's a lot of things that we have to do and, you know, that's kind of a lost year. And now I think we're, we're pushing to try to see how we can kind of double it up and get things moving for our community because we feel that they deserve it and they need it. So be a lot of sweat on our back, but a lot of sweat that we'll be put into it, but we're going to try to do what we can do to, for our community here. And being someone who's born and raised in the neighborhood, I want to give back and see what we can do. Um, for all of you. Um, thank you very much. That's all I really have. Great. Thank you. So exciting as things are starting to open up again.
looking forward to this um, open night event. That'll be great. Um, just moving on, we now have the report from the parent groups. So, uh, Josefina or Claudia or Carmen, uh, if you could see about the Feminist Latinas Unidas. Sure. Who would like to speak? Yeah, go ahead, Osvina. Claudia was going to give the report, um, and I was going to support in translating if she'd like. Claudia, como quiera. Hola, buenas noches a todos. Good evening, everybody. Este, bueno, yo, mi nombre es Claudia, pertenezco al grupo de Familias Latinas Unidas. Uh, my name is Claudia, and as you know, I'm with uh, Familias Latinas Unidas. Y pues, eh, tuvimos una celebración de César Chávez. We had a César Chávez event. Uh, tuvimos como invitado una persona de la fundación de César Chávez. One of our guests was a member of the foundation of César Chávez. También tuvimos una persona de Oxnard que trabaja piscando. We also had an individual that actually did the work um, farming the, um, the fruits and vegetables. Ah, quien nos comentó cómo se trabaja y las, necesidad, las necesidades que ellos tienen. Which uh, shared with us his actual experience um, that he lives and um, what their needs are before, as a farm worker. Uh, también tuvimos un foro, foro de inmigración. We also had a forum for Im immigration. Uh, que fue un éxito a pesar que fue por Zoom. Which was excellent despite the fact that it was on Zoom. Uh, con, la con la colaboración mm -hmm. del Parque Virginia y las with the collaboration, I'm sorry, sorry. Legal Aid. With the collaboration of Virginia Avenue Park and Legal Aid. Y la ciudad de Santa Monica. And the city of Santa Monica. También tuvimos como invitados a la policía del a la policía de Santa Monica. Tuvimos a, yes, como invitados a la Santa Monica Police Department. Había muchos robos sobre los catalizadores para que ellos nos dieran información. We specifically asked and they presented on the, ¿cómo se dice? Calabradores. Uh, on the catalytic converters. Yeah. Thank you, converters. Um, which the community was very concerned about. También vino, tuvimos como invitados a NAMI. We Al also grupo. had an organization by the name of NAMI. Ya que hay mucho interés sobre la salud mental. Because there's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of need and interest in mental health at this time. Debido a lo del COVID y pues que muchas personas se quedaron sin trabajo. Which many people were without a uh, opportunity for employment and um, definitely that was one of the issues. Tuvimos una enfermera, tuvimos un invitado Tuvimos una invitada, una enfermera de St. John's para dar información sobre las vacunas del COVID, ya que muchos tenían preguntas acerca sobre las vacunas. We also had a nurse come from St. Joseph uh, to speak about the vaccinations, um, as many of our members had questions about vaccines. Participamos también en el proceso para la selección del nuevo jefe de la policía. We participated in the selection of the police chief. Uh, también sobre el descuento de la luz para los residentes de la Pico Neighborhood. 
We also had a, per, a person come to speak to our group about uh, potential discounts for energy um, and uh, saving saving energy in our homes. También tuvimos una col colaboración importante. Uh, had a, a very important collaboration effort con la ciudad y la policía with the police and the city of Santa Monica para mejorar la esquina de la 28 y pico después de la tragedia uh, to, to talk about the improvements at one of the specific uh, streets, street corners where they had a fatal uh, um, accident. Y tuvimos una pequeña celebración, celebración del Día de las Madres. And finally, we had a very small uh, but meaningful celebration for Mother's Day. Pues, eso es todo hasta ahorita. <laughs> That's all I have to report till this, at this point. Barbie, you're muted. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm muting myself. Um, I just, thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Claudia and Josefina, for translating. Um, do any of the advisory board members have questions? If not, we'll just go ahead and move on to the um, parent connection group. Um, Andriana? Adriana, can you hear us? I think Adriana is frozen. Adriana looks like it's her internet. I saw Hazard also on the line. Oh, I see some movement. Adriana? Yes, can you hear me now? I can, yeah, go ahead. Or no? Yes. Okay. Um, wonderful things. Thank you, Dr. Compton. Um, since we last met at the Michigan Greens Festival, these are highlights for Was the Green Festival able to continue as a past calendar of several years? This time it was done in Zoom, so it was extremely creative. Janine worked extremely hard. Carla was diligent. We were pulling from all different directions, and I had the opportunity to be there to see it all take place and to come together between Janine's brother being a chef, um, stepping in at the last moment, farmer's market. Carla was very active in making sure the farmer's market, we get our bunches, and it was just exciting to see it on the I loved it. And then the strong state, one big highlight for me really also was our girls, our girl Me, enormous young girls, they look up to her, they admire her, they listen. She's very creative and innovative. She had a very short time to get it together with the Zoom, but she had been planning this for since last year. And this is what she does on the regular. So to see her at work and to do the breakout rooms, all I seen was nothing but professionalism from the tea party to the different conversations. She just moved effortlessly. And this was done on Zoom. And usually she has like a full day of this, but her time was crunched down again. You know, we're working with the pandemic. And a beautiful thing was these are two staples that's on our regular calendar every events every year and the two women were able to perform it effortlessly at least I think I'm go ahead can you hear me now okay can you hear me now yeah. Okay. So we're in the process of restructuring our mode of operations, which includes community outreach. 
uh, talking with local businesses and networking ourselves as a group, as a community of Blacks, the different youth, especially the 12th graders coming out, helping, assisting, making sure that they can become employed in their local areas that they live in, and also assisting in Black-owned and operated businesses. These are different ideas. Uh, these are different people I'm already affiliated with and collaborated with and businesses that I do right now. Pepperdine, Loyola, and the universities in order to help bring more information to the Black community for health, uh, for wellness, mental well-being, and also in the area of financial literacy. But one thing we are going to add to our calendar towards the end of the year because of the pandemic, because of George Floyd, and also things that Seneca has experienced with riots, we're going to have to do, we're going to be doing a day of prayer. So that takes on with a collaboration with, with different synagogues, rabbis, ministers, priests. Um, and that is not going to more than likely be held at Virginia Park because of the, the pandemic and respect of clergy and, you know, park and regulations. But this is on our calendar to collectively come together in the field of prayer. Um, but we're just putting that out there just so everybody is becoming aware. This is needed, you know, of all different faiths collectively coming together. But as far as PCG, we're doing so many things and we love the support we've received from Virginia Park. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Liz. Um, Janine has been a staple. Shirley has been a strong force. Um, we just want to say thank you for what everybody has done pre-pandemic and during this pandemic. We're still getting it done no matter what. With all the adjusting and adapting, it's just making us become better and stronger in who we are. So thank you again for having us to be available to us. Thank you. Thank you. Are there um, other reports with respect to PCG or any questions from the advisory board? Okay, there be none. Um, we're going to move on to discussion and action items. And I am excited to um, introduce uh, Derek Johnson. Uh, and Janine may want to further introduce him as well. But um, he is joining us from Crossroads Equity and Justice Institute, the CDF Freedom School. Uh, he's the founding director of the Equity and Justice Institute at Crossroads School for Arts and Sciences. And as many of you know, um, there's a collaboration right now with the Virginia Avenue Park and Crossroads and the um, Crossroads Equity and Justice Institute CDF Freedom School. So Janine, I don't know if you want to say a couple words and then Mr. Johnson, we'd love to hear you um, share with us about the school and uh, about what the park is, is doing with that. Um, I think you covered it all, but again, Derek Johnson is the founding director of the Equity and Justice Institute and I work there and support him um, as operations coordinator and, um, you know, I'll, Derek, I'll just let you take it away. Well, uh, uh, my first and foremost, my appreciation for allowing me to be in your space today and actually to engage in this conversation. Uh, I'm looking at the time, it's 8.30 and I don't want to monopolize more of your meeting, uh, but I definitely want to um, take this opportunity to tell you uh, the exciting program we're trying to bring to the community. Uh, and to thank Carla uh, and, uh, again, my colleagues on this uh, that you know are uh, Dr. Shirley Compton and Janine Jackson, who actually work in collaboration with us uh, to deliver this for the um, students and families of the Pico neighborhood. And so uh, I, I just wanted to want to thank you uh, for allowing us into space and uh, thank you again for the uh, potential for this partnership. Um, I'm not sure how familiar folks are uh, with just uh, uh, freedom schools in general uh, and uh, how they got uh, started, but so I'll give a little historical context and then talk about how we're trying to uh, incorporate this into the uh, program delivering for the summer for some of your students. Uh, so uh, from a historical reference point, um, uh, over a 10-week period in the summer of 1964, it was known as Freedom Summer. There were more than uh, 700 uh, student volunteers who, uh, who joined with organizations and local African Americans in a historic effort to shatter the foundations of white supremacy in Mississippi. Um, Jim Crow laws, uh, segregated schools, impoverishment, 
uh, et cetera. So uh, one of the nation's most racially divisive states at the time was Mississippi. Uh, and so a number of folks came in to see what they could do to actually help a lot of school children actually improve academically. So um, fast forward, one of the initiatives that still endures nationally uh, from uh, the Freedom Summer or Freedom Schools, and this was developed through the Children's Defense Fund organization. Uh, just separately, I happen to be an executive council member on uh, California's um, uh, Children's Defense Fund uh, and wanted to bring uh, uh, Marion Wright Edelman, who is the founder of this organization, who also, by the way, uh, was a principal organizer of not only Freedom School Summers a campaign, but also uh, she was uh, the creator of Head Start programs nationally. Um, but anyway, addressing the inequities in segregated school systems in the South, uh, she and others developed these literacy programs, these culturally competent uh, trainings and mentorship programs for students in the community. So uh, the Children's Defense Fund Freedom Schools model is uh, still in existence. It's a six-week summer literacy and culture enrichment program. It's designed to serve children and youth in grades K through 12 in communities where quality academic uh, enrichment programming is limited or too expensive or non-existent. So by partnering with schools, faith-based and community-based organizations, municipalities, colleges, and universities, even some juvenile detention centers, our Freedom Schools offer programming to communities at no cost. So we're uh, through the uh, Crossroads School uh, and in partnership with Virginia Avenue Park, uh, we're going to be providing a Freedom School uh, in our inaugural launch uh, for this program uh, is this summer, uh, 2021, actually uh, in a couple of weeks. June 21st will be the launch date and uh, we will conclude all our programming by uh, July 30th. So uh, some of the uh, kind of research-based uh, multicultural uh, integrated reading curriculum that uh, supports this program center on essentially kind of five uh, components. One is high quality academic enrichment, uh, parent and family development, uh, civic engagement and social action, um, intergenerational servant leadership development. Uh, which we'll be actually providing with the partnership that we've developed with uh, Santa Monica College. Uh, we're working with both the Black Collegians Organization and Adelante uh, programs uh, as our pipeline for our facilitators. And so we have seven uh, what are uh, entitled uh, servant intern uh, leader interns who will be providing the facilitation, the training uh, in our classrooms. And that'll a lot of that stuff, again, will focus on um, uh, culturally competent uh, literacy, uh, nutrition, health, uh, and mental health uh, pedagogy. So uh, we have, um, uh, we're really looking at trying to um, provide children and youth uh, with significant gains in their reading achievement uh, and to quell uh, the experiences of summer, summer learning loss. Uh, students also uh, that we'll be working with, they'll also receive uh, two uh, meals and a snack daily. Uh, as well as uh, a book uh, each week uh, that will be providing to students to develop their own home libraries. Uh, again, we're going to be targeting uh, uh, 50 um, uh, children who uh, reside in the Pico neighborhood. Uh, our services will be for uh, grades one through eight. Uh, currently, we have 50 students who are in elementary school and middle school age. Uh, I think those numbers are starting to fluctuate. Janine, you can actually provide me where we're at now. We were at 50, there have been a couple of dropouts where we had a waiting list also. So I think we're still at 50, maybe at 49 at this moment. Uh, and our classrooms and programs are gonna be uh, essentially a 10 to one child to adult ratio. So uh, we'll have uh, five students in five classrooms with 10 children, and we'll have uh, two additional SLIs who will be rovers. Um, trying to think what else I'm uh, leaving out. Uh, the other component of the program centers on the partnership we're trying to develop uh, with uh, Snapchat. Uh, Barbara, you've been instrumental in providing that linkage into Snap. Uh, we've been in communication with them now four times. 
Uh, they are finalizing a curriculum uh, that they will be using that will focus on uh, STEM-related uh, programs, uh, coding, uh, digital uh, graphics and design, and uh, digital music. Uh, and the way it's structured right now is that they'll have essentially a mentor uh, that will be coming in towards the end of uh, every two-week session. So we're gearing six weeks, and so two weeks, focal point of some of those STEM programs. So it'll be two weeks of coding, uh, two weeks of uh, um, uh, graphic art and design, and two weeks of digital music. And uh, we'll also uh, conduct a couple of field trips uh, for the summer. So I'm trying to wrap up the, everything as quickly as I possibly can. I know that there probably are some additional questions and I probably left out uh, a ton of information, uh, but I'm trying to be as succinct as possible. Uh, we're going to be also uh, trying to do this program for a uh, three-year period. We want to actually track the success rates of our students that we're working with and see how they're matriculating academically. Uh, and we're going to be hiring on uh, what's classified as uh, a site test manager to do some pre and post testing on where kids are when they enter the program and how they're uh, performing once we uh, finish with our uh, six weeks. And we'll hopefully be able to track them uh uh for three uh three year period uh consecutively um i'm going to uh stop talking now uh, because i don't want to monopolize your meeting uh and see if you have any additional questions thank you that was really exciting to hear about it i remember some of the preliminary discussions that uh, we're having when you were in the application process um to be considered for the the program through the children's defense fund so this is just really exciting to hear um, how just how every how everything's gonna go. I can't wait for the kids to start day one. Um, are there any questions or comments from the board? There's a comment in the chat. Oh, thanks. I'm still figuring out this blue jeans thing. To Derek, how involved will parents be in the summer program, if at all? So I, Liz, uh, and. and Actually, let me give a quick shout out too, because Liz, I think you were the first, one of the first uh, early uh, supporters of the program. We've never had a chance to meet, uh, but I've heard your name a thousand times and uh, also want to congratulate you on uh, your work at the park again. Uh, nothing but uh, great uh, words and praise about what you've uh, done in the community. Uh, and to your point, and I'm glad you see because I've left some stuff out. We're trying to provide like a holistic approach to what we offer to not only the students, but to the families uh, that we'll be uh, partnering with. And so as an additional component of the program, one of the offerings will be uh, financial literacy training that we'll be uh, setting up again through Carla at uh, Virginia Avenue Park. Uh, one of our funding partners uh, is Pacific West Bank. Uh, I targeted a number of financial institutions to uh, help support this, and one of the things that they want to do uh, is provide uh, um, kind of pro bono services uh, around the uh, financial uh, fields. And so um, we had a preliminary meeting, uh, Carla, myself, Janine, um, uh, Nancy with uh, Pacific West uh, Bank, and a gentleman by the name of Noel, uh, who works with the Haven Neighborhood Services. And so what they also provide is uh, financial capacity programs. Uh, financial literacy workshops, online banking workshops, um, financial coaching, uh, bank account enrollment assistance, uh, debt relief assistance, uh, identity theft recovery. Uh, we're putting together a survey right now to send that information out to the parents to see how many people not only connected uh, through the program with their children, but also we want to make this an offering uh, to the community at large. Uh, we're going to try to provide the pipeline first for the parents, but then like we'll see what the enrollment looks like and then actually offer those services out to anybody else who's interested uh, in gaining um, access to uh, these free services. Uh, right now we have a preliminary uh, dates of uh, July 10th and July 17th uh, that are going to be uh, basically separate. We'll have one that will focus primarily on financial literacy and some of the credit recovery work. Uh, but then we I also want to to give an opportunity to have the bank talk specifically about the um, value of uh, not only wealth management, but that potential for investing and how you can gain additional capital. And so uh, to put out some basic training on like what that's like, 
uh, and uh, provide those services uh, uh, on a Saturday. Uh, they'll be uh, at this state uh, three hours um, in, in, in duration. So Liz, to your question, uh, that's what we want to try to offer up to uh, the parents uh, and any other adult in the community who want to gain access to that information. Thank you, that's the question. Thank you, Derek, for answering. Um, good to know that uh, this is definitely along the lines of the whole community being able to benefit um, for this kind of a program. Are there any other questions for, for Derek or Janine? Oh, uh, follow-up question. Will there be any follow-up with the students on the impact of the Freedom School Post the program? And I actually have another question as well. Will these same students automatically be enrolled for the next year, or will it be a reapplication process? Um, or what if they age out? How how will that happen? So just as a recap, uh, yes, uh, the follow-up it will be. We're going to, like I said, we have uh, an evaluation that we're going to do with every student that comes in. We're going to actually evaluate them when they come in to see how they're performing. Uh, we're going to evaluate them when they actually uh, in the program in the six weeks. Uh, and the objective over a three year span is to create and continue to have that pipeline of the students that we originally worked with. Uh, that will they will be uh, kind of the, the first um, uh, first folks we um, provide the opportunity to. Uh, but if they don't want it, and then we'll move on to other kids in the community who might be um, interested in access. And then there is a question about the the children's data, um, and how. I mean, my my understanding is that children's data will only be used with respect to the school, um, similar to how other schools evaluate, you know, the students' information. I'm not sure about the Snapchat app having children's data. I don't. My understanding was that's not. It's more just they're coming in to provide education service, not. Necessarily, yeah. Snapchat, snap, yeah. No, those are those are two different things. Snapchat won't have access to children's data. That's that's just programming offering. Uh, the children's data is strictly about how they're performing with their uh, reading comprehension, and we'll have that information uh, directly. So those are two different things. Uh, snap is just going to be um, uh, summer uh, programming uh, that'll try to provide them with the. Uh, specific uh, training skill sets around how to do uh, STEM related work. There's Thank no you. assessment with that. Thank you. Um, and just, and uh, are there any other questions from the board? I just want to make sure to uh, just noticing the time that it is 8:40. We still have a couple of other things we wanted to go through tonight. Um, Seeing none, thank you again, Derek, for coming and speak with our group. I, I hope that we'll be able to hear you um, speak with us again after the summer to hear how things went and um, how we can continue to support for next summer's program. Sure, and and thank you all for uh, allowing us uh, to engage with the community, the children. Uh, we really look forward to it, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Sorry if I was wrong. No, not at all. Thank you for coming. It was so exciting to hear more about it. All right, we'll, we'll see you at the next week. Night. All right, you too. Okay. All Bye. right, so Bye. moving on. Thank you, good night. Uh, to the next item on our agenda, uh, we have discussion and possible action to plan a virtual college tour for Park families. And I don't know if Janine, if you could speak uh, a bit about that. Um, and I know that uh, there were we were trying to find ways to work with staff um, on this particular matter. Yes. Um, so uh, I will say I uh, unfortunately have not been able to meet with Gloria. Um, I've been so wrapped up with Freedom School. I, I just did not realize um, I did not realize the, the load that that I was going to have to take on. Um, so I'd have nothing to report. And Gloria, I deeply apologize. Um, I have put a couple months ago, right after our meeting. I don't even remember when that was. I did put an agenda together, you know, and something to present to the committee, uh, meaning my committee, me, the committee of Janine and Gloria, and um, <laughs> and uh, with with Eric as staff. And I just I haven't even hit send. Um, Liz, I feel so horrible. This is your your baby, and um, I'm dropping the baby, but I promise that it will not get hurt. <laughs> And so um, I'm I'm talking because I, I need support. I, I need uh, I need additional support. Um, again, the Freedom School is taking on a lot more than I had anticipated. 
And so I'm, I'm putting 180% of me into that. And, um, and you know, that's, that's where I am. I, I, again, my apologies. I don't know if Gloria, did you have an update as well? Or um is there some sort of way that we can work with staff to do, to move this forward or um timelines? What what would be the most beneficial knowing that one, we are not able to do an appointment process? Oh, Carla has a comment. And I'm just thinking uh, for timing. You know, I didn't know, but Eric, you're on the call and one of the things was to maybe work with uh, with you a little bit, and maybe this summer there's a way to do a college trip um, as part of the things that you're planning for the summer? Yeah, definitely. We can, um, once I think she gets um, the Freedom School going, which I know is a, a big thing, um, and by the way, I'm excited my nephew's a part of it. I'm super excited. Yes, he for is. That. So, so, um, Jackson. You know, <laughs> yeah, so I'm super excited for that. I'm looking forward to it. And um, I'm, I think once the we get moving, I think we can touch base at the end of June, early July to see how we can tackle it and maybe get something going, um, some of our high school kids. And maybe that high school event we have July 1st would be a good way to segue into it so we can get some of those kids involved in that virtual college tour. So I can maybe create and, something and we can go from well, there. I have, I have all of the, I have the whole program written out, like the schools, the ID, I have the whole thing completed. I just did not send it to, to Gloria <laughs> or you, Eric. So. Um, if you could just send me, Gloria and, and Eric, if you could just send me an email on Wednesday, just say, Janine, give us this plan. Um, I will, I will send it. I, Cause I, I did, I did the work. I just didn't give it to you. So. <laughs> no worries. Definitely. This Wednesday or after the school opens? No, this Wednesday. So then it won't be looming over my head. <laughs> I just like have meetings plan. all day. I just have meetings all day tomorrow for Freedom School and training with Shirley. She's coming to our campus for Freedom School. So I just, just please send me an email on Wednesday. If you have to, you know, call me, um, you know, text me. Oh, and email and text. <laughs> email, please. And seriously, you're not bothering me. I, 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 I completed it. I just have to send it. So. Well, thank you for all your help, Janine. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Janine, Gloria, and Eric. That's my report. Great. <laughs> Hold on. I think uh, Gloria is trying to speak. I want to make sure she's unmuted so we can hear her. Go ahead, Gloria. Yeah. ¿Me, me escuchan? ¿Sí me escuchan? I'm sorry. ¿Me escuchan? Sí. 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 Okay. <clears throat> bueno, uh, uh, I'm very sorry, too, that I, uh, uh, I, I, I guess I haven't done my part, too. I should call her, too. Excuse me, I'm sorry, and 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 find out what what is gonna happen. But uh, since now she said that uh, we can uh, uh, send her uh, uh, this email to remind, and uh, I, I'll do I'll do that. So we're gonna do what we're supposed to do. <laughs> I'm sorry, and thank you. Thank you, Janine. Thank you. It sounds sounds like we have a plan. All right, so we'll follow up uh, next meeting on this. Um, are there any questions or comments from the board about the college plan, college tours? Okay. All right, then the next item on the agenda is discussion of possible action to schedule and plan for our next quarterly meeting. Um, normally, our, we would have a retreat during the end of summer, beginning of the fall. Um, last year, because of COVID, we weren't really able to do that. And so we are hoping that we'll be able to do something like that this year in person. Um, so we were thinking in terms of dates, although it's a little tricky because of schools um, starting, but in sort of, you know, mid-August to late September. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the board is feeling or how the board feels, uh, or have their calendars and knows their schedules. I think so many things are up in the air until until that June 15th um, county public health order, but we can we can try to come up with a date now. Uh, how is how is everyone feeling on the board about that? Like a late September kind of date, so after school starts, once everything's sort of settled in, 
I think that sounds prudent. Um, so just for, you know, logistic conversation, so you would be, you would, your September meeting wouldn't be a regular meeting anyway because it it's going to fall on Labor Day. So you're just going to be now identifying your special meeting date, which can be your retreat. So you could choose a Saturday in um, later September if you wanted to or an evening to do it. Um, I think is Carmen still on the call? I know that, and maybe Gloria knows, I know that there is some conversation about doing a uh, an event for the Hispanic Heritage Month and Mexican Independence Day, Gloria. And so I don't know which Saturday that might be. So we just have to think about and why does that impact all of you? Well, Gloria probably wouldn't be able to come and some of the crew members, but also um, what space we would use if it was an indoor meeting. Um, do you, you're on mute, Gloria, if you were going to. No. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, see, sí. but uh, well, I, I'm sorry. I I I don't I don't know now if, if there is um, a plan for 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 the celebration on September. Um, I will get someone to co co contact uh, uh, our leaders now to find out if they have think on that. But uh, uh, if, uh, for me, I don't know if I have understand correctly, it's, but it is about for the for the day for the re retreat, right? So uh, for me, any any, any date is fine, but um, I I will ask them and find out. Or oh, I don't know if Carmen uh, still there and if, if they have talk about it, anything like that. I don't know. Carmen, ¿está usted ahí? Se fue Carmen y se fue Claudia. Tenían oh. la cita de puente. Oh, ok. Bueno, pues, eh, eh, um, creo que voy a, a preguntar con ellos si tienen an, algo, algún plan, porque la verdad no lo sé. I was, we, we could come up with, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gloria. Yeah, I, I, at this moment, I don't know if they have a plan. But for me, I just can say any date is fine with me. Okay, thank you. I was um, looking online, and it looks like the uh, according to Google, um, we have both Mexican Independence Day and um, Yom Kippur, uh, which fall around September 16th. So maybe that weekend is not a good weekend to plan our retreat because there will be these different things that are happening. Um, but what about September 25th? Does that work for most of us? It's a Saturday. We could do a Saturday morning, 10 to 12 in person, um, or 10 to 1 if we wanted to have lunch together. Um, we could say it tentatively, and then if we need to change it, we we can. Um, I just want to make sure that also works for thoroughly. I know because I, I can see Christina on her head. Janine seems kind of nodding her head. Gloria's nodding her head. So I don't know if that works for you, Shirley, as well. Tentatively, Saturday, September 25th. Oh, no, okay. All right, well, we, we don't know, but I think we've got a critical mass, at least of the four of us now. We also need to see if it works for Mario. Um, some of the things that hopefully we'll be able to have more information about as well as because Liz is no longer serving on our board, we have a vacancy. We have to work with the city on when we end the Parks and Recs Commission to find out when we can fill that vacancy. We also have um, two of our board members' terms are uh, coming up this uh, now-ish and whether or not they would like to renew, so we're talking with them. Um, so we might have some changes to the board, but hopefully on September 25th we'll have quorum. And uh, most, if not all of you who are here will be able to join us.
That looks like we've yeah. set the date tentatively. Do we need to vote on that, Carla? You can, but it's a date. No, that's fine. So September 25th, right? That's what you saw? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I did right. also want to point out that there are some uh, new guidelines for boards and commissions that are going to be approved at tomorrow night's council meeting, or it's on the agenda. Um, there also is a uh, an attendance requirement that's been proposed. So just to, you know, whatever is proposed, I'll be sure to let everyone know, okay, or whatever gets approved so everyone's aware. And then we will, as uh, Barbie said, we'll be doing your recruitment to um, fill Liz's spot as soon as we get direction from the Rec, Rec and Parks Commission. Okay, that is correct. Are there, are there any questions or comments? No? Any announcements? Oh, Janine, yes? Sorry, you're muted. Going silly. Eric and Gloria, I just sent you the college thing <laughs> so Yay! you don't have to call or text me i just sent it <laughs> okay excellent all right um any other questions or comments or follow-ups from tonight's meeting all right if not uh we are adjourned at 8 54 p.m oh wait a sec we've a little thing popped up in the chat oh never mind okay um all right we are adjourned it's 8 54 p.m thank you for uh being patient with me as I navigate blue jeans as the interim chair. Liz, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to officially stop recording.